everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Leanna today's video is all about products that I'm on the fence about <laughs> these are products that they're not terrible but I'm also not super enthusiastic about my purchase <laughs> like I'm I could go one way or another on these it was just an idea I had so I'm going to talk about like brushes and a few makeup products that I gathered up here. So first off for brushes, there's this Eco Tools set. I feel like I go back and forth between whether or not I like these. They're definitely soft. This powder brush, this blush brush sort of thing is very soft. Um Unless I stamp it on, in which case I do feel like it's pokey, but if I like stroke it like that, it's soft. I don't find myself using it as much as my other blush brush, my Real Techniques blush brush, just because this one's better. <laughs> it's better. Uh, sometimes I use this if I want to dust powder all over my face, I'll use this. The eyeshadow brushes, I do use the angled brush the most between these three. It's quite stiff uh, and it's quite thick compared to my other angled brushes. I don't know if this is even centered. Okay. If it wasn't centered before, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so this was marketed as like an angled liner brush and it's way too thick for that. So if I'm going to use it... Like, I'll stamp it along a lash line, but there's no way I'm doing a winged liner with it. Or I'll use it in my eyebrows, but I have a better... I have a better brow brush now from e.l.f., which has an actual spoolie on the other end. So I don't know. I mean, sometimes I use it, and sometimes I just forget about it. And like I said, I have... It's too thick for winged liner, and I have a better winged liner brush, too. This one is from Essence and it's a lot thinner. And these two, this one is supposed to be a concealer brush. This one is a flat eyeshadow brush. They're almost the same. I don't see the point in throwing both of these in a set, to be completely honest with you. There's a slight difference in thickness, otherwise they're the same. And this doesn't pack on eyeshadow as well as some of the... Uh, eyeshadow brushes I have and I don't really use concealer brushes so sometimes I use these for cream eyeshadow or liquid eyeshadow like the steel of glitter and glows if I want to spread them out a bit um or I'll use it to cut my crease with a little bit of concealer most of the time, I end up not using these as much. I just feel like I jumped on it because the price was really good. They were It was about $12 for five brushes. I got rid of the fifth brush, which was one of those like eyebrow grooming combs that it was, it was useless. So <laughs> I don't know. They just don't get as much attention from me as a lot of my other brushes now. I have a couple of face primers. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Face Primer. There's nothing wrong with this primer. There's also not a lot that I feel it does. Now this works under... It, this doesn't disrupt foundation, I'll put it to you that way. I don't feel like it um, makes things not work, but I also don't feel like it makes things work. I kind of just feel like it sits there and doesn't really do anything. I like that this doesn't feel greasy. It kind of just feels like I'm putting lotion, lotion on my face. It doesn't smell like anything. But it's supposed to refine pores, fill fine lines, brighten complexion, and even skin tone. And I feel like it doesn't do any, any of those things. So, I don't know. <laughs> and then this Joe Fresh Illuminating Primer. Uh, sometimes the pump doesn't work properly. <laughs> So it kind of like either flies everywhere or nothing comes out at all. And the thing with this is that 
instead of being a nice glowy cream like I found the Tarte Brighter Days moisturizer was, this kind of dries down onto the skin and the flecks of shimmer kind of sink into different areas instead of sitting on top of the skin and providing a nice sheen. It kind of just almost like go into your pores and emphasize weird texture. So I like I like the idea of this. I feel like maybe it would work better not all over the face. Maybe I should just be using it as a highlighter like this. But I don't think I should be using it all over my face the way I was with the Tarte sample that I had. This is the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation in the shade Pale. This is... okay. Um, I feel like some days it looks really good, and then other days I feel like it looks quite chalky. And it is very, very, very liquidy. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it before. It is in a dropper, and it is very liquidy. So I do have to use quite a bit of it. It's The color is pretty good even though it's yellow. I find that because it's a cool yellow and the formula is quite sheer, I actually don't notice it that much on my skin. So the color is good. If you are very pale, this is going to work for you. It's called pale. <laughs> I've never heard of any other brand called a shade pale. Uh, but it's just the idea that some days it works and some days it doesn't. I, I would prefer a product to be more consistent in what this is and also the idea that I use so much of it. I, it it's, I went over this in my review that it's 0.43 ounces and it's about $18 so it ends up being the same amount as a high-end foundation. So, in that, in that respect, I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> but when it looks good, like, it really looks good. So, I don't know. <laughs> this is the Kat Von D setting powder. This is just a deluxe size that I got with a point perk. The more I use this, the more I think that I can't use it under my eyes. My under eyes turn yellow with this. I don't know if it oxidizes or if this actually has color to it, but I can't use it under my eyes. It's a really good, um, like, it feels really nice. It's very finely milled. It feels really soft. It sets the under eyes really nicely. It sets the rest of my face really nicely. But the last few times I've worn it especially, I've noticed that I look kind of jaundiced under my eyes. Anyway, yeah, like, there's nothing wrong with this powder. It's a nice powder. I just don't like that it changes color on me. And powder should not change color. So, yeah, and obviously I wouldn't buy it again anyways because I don't support her anymore. Brows Mariposa Auto Eyebrow Pencil. Now, this is definitely extremely pigmented. very very pigmented which can be a bit of an issue I don't want an eyebrow product that's under pigmented but I don't want one that's over pigmented because then I feel like I'm drawing in my eyebrows too much it's it's not only really pigmented but it's super creamy so then trying to spread it out it can actually go all over your face kind of melt all over your skin so what I've had to do in order to make this work is actually take, uh, where did I put it now? I have to take the brush end and kind of like um, swipe some of the color off and draw it on in order to make it look the most natural. And then sometimes I'll draw on straight from the pencil over the thickest part of my brow. But yeah, it's it's too creamy and too pigmented. 
luckily it is very cheap but I'm still not sure if I would buy it again or not I, I don't know another Dollar Tree purchase is this LA Colors eyeshadow bold 12 color eyeshadow palette in chic these are okay um they blend really easily, which is nice. It's because they're so powdery and dry. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes the best eyeshadows that blend well are very powdery. Um, the lightest colors at the top, they don't show up on my skin. Uh, the really dark colors in here are not that dark. They're not very dark. So when I was trying to do a really dark eyeshadow look, which will probably up, be up before now, um, I was doing it for my Chrono Trigger eyeshadow looks, and I was doing um, dark matter look, which was really dark purple. And I thought, well, instead of using Kat Von D, maybe I can use these. I had to wipe the whole thing off and start again, and, and I had to use my Kat Von D products because these dark eyeshadows do nothing they basically just wiped away uh, they couldn't pack on I couldn't get them to build up I can use some of the mid-tones okay like this periwinkle is quite nice but overall some of the colors are too similar dark colors don't pack on very well and it smells a lot like perfume like grandma perfume which is not the best smell for an eyeshadow, pa eyeshadow palette to have so that's another one that I'm probably not going to buy again and I don't I don't even know it might not stay in my collection for very long so this is the shade Kush from NYX. It's a hot singles eyeshadow. I feel like I'm going crazy. Sometimes I put it in my outer corner and into the crease and I think it looks nice. But then when I really 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 want to build it up I can't. And look at that swatch. That swatch looks great. But then when I do that, look where did it go? Where did that pigment go? It's not a very good green. Not at all. Or at the very least I should say that it's quite patchy. In concentrated doses on just a small area, this shade works quite well. But I'm like building and building here to try and show you the color. <laughs> I've gone over this like eight times now. So I ended up ordering a green from Igneous because I'm I I basically I, I told Taylor I need a green that looks like this <laughs> do you have one <laughs> and she's like yeah evergreen is the one that looks most similar to that and so I ordered that yesterday and I'm hoping that it will work a lot better than this it should work a lot better than this because I need a reliable green I I can't deal with trying to apply this um, only having it work in certain small areas and then when I want it to have that dark pigment all over it, it fails me <laughs> it's very irritating okay this this shade doesn't want to come out but this is Urban Decay Solstice over here this is a moon dust shadow I like it. I like it. It's not... It doesn't have as strong as a shift as I had seen online and in videos. So there is some shift, but it's not as strong as what I was anticipating. So while it is very pretty, I'm... I'm kind of like, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Do I regret buying it? 
I don't know. I don't use it very much. Um, I should try and use it more because it is pretty, but it's not what I expected. Not just because of the lack of color shift, but the actual tone of it is different from what I expected as well. So I feel like I don't wear it as much because I am a little let down by it. Lastly, I have a few lip products. This is... Okay, so this is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. This particular shade... Which shade is this? This is Santiago. This is a beautiful color. I decluttered the other two of this formula because <laughs> they did not go on nearly as well as this one. So this is... A formula that to me must be very inconsistent between shades because this one is beautiful and the other two I had I had a gray which was from the Toronto palette this is from the Santiago palette and I had one which was it was it Moscow yeah I think it was Moscow and that was a more of like a grayish navy so the gray and the grayish navy they were not good. It takes so many layers to get this built up unless it's like a red like this. The red is fine. The red is beautiful. <laughs> the others were horrible. At least with the suede, the liquid suede's Every single color I've had goes on fully opaque, and it doesn't require layering. These ones, I can't say the same. And they're so small. Look. I don't believe that this is 0.27 fluid ounces. That would make this the exact same as an Everlasting Liquid Lipstick from Kat Von D. That's not that's not true. Uh, you could argue that those are longer and skinnier and this is a little bit shorter and chubbier. N yeah, but I don't believe it because the other ones I had, I was having to dip into them so many times to get more product, not just because I was having to layer it, but because there was barely any product on the wand. Where's all the product? I would love to take one of these apart and see how much product is actually in here. It's not 8 mils. It's not 0.27 fluid ounces. It's not. <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> now, I really like these Wet n Wild Mega Last lipsticks. I have two of them. I have this one in Wine Room and the other one is Smoking Hot Pink. The only issue I have is that the lids are really loose and I'm afraid that if I didn't just have them in a case, if I was bringing them with me in a purse, that they wouldn't stay on. I can even see that this particular lid has cracked. So I think that uh, at this point in time, I wouldn't buy this type of lipstick again uh, until they redo the packaging. The packaging is too cheap. It's a really good lipstick formula, but I would rather pay a little bit more than what $199, $299 and get a sturdier package because that's just not good enough. <laughs> and last, this is sturdier packaging. <laughs> This is the Annabelle and Haley Alsacer Outrageous Collection in Banana Yana. I love this lipstick. I love the color of it. There's nothing like it in my collection. My issue is that it's very gritty. Uh, at first, this didn't really bother me, but the more that I've worn it, the more that it it feels quite dry and gritty on my lips, and I don't like to wear it for very long and if I am wearing it for longer periods I find that I have to keep applying it in order to um, 
keep my lips hydrated if I just leave on a single layer my lips don't feel as comfortable so while I do think that this lipstick is beautiful I, I kind of wish that either it didn't have micro glitter in it and that maybe they had been able to formulate the blue shift into it some other way um, or maybe I should have purchased a different color. <laughs> it's just a little unfortunate. So those are all the products that I have that I'm a little on the fence about whether I like them, I don't like them. There are good aspects to a lot of them and then there are bad aspects as well so I'm a little unsure. Do you have any products that you're a little unsure about? I would love to know and why is it that you're unsure of them? I post Mondays and Fridays here on this channel in the afternoon Eastern Time and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys!